This is a program on WeChat, China's most popular social network. It's called MythBuster and it allows authorities and third-party fact-checkers to debunk fake news that is spreading across the network. This article in MythBuster says that there's a rumour circulating on WeChat, which falsely claims that the People's Daily is reporting that smoking tobacco has medicinal benefits as good as traditional Chinese medicine. The release of MythBuster in June 2017 rang a lot of alarm bells. People worry dissenting opinions can now be silenced on the ground of fake news by the government. Furthermore, MythBuster scans what you have read on WeChat in order to suggest fact-checking articles to you. And that triggers an array of concerns about government surveillance. Less controversial is Tiao Yi Tiao. It's a game that runs instantly on WeChat. It attracted 400 million players in less than three days. These two apps are both mini programs, meaning they can load instantly on WeChat rather than being downloaded from app stores. Tencent, the company which owns WeChat, has been giving mini programs a huge push since 2016 as it aims to make WeChat a complete ecosystem rather than a simple chat app. And there's another interesting facet to WeChat's march into the mini program territory. Since Google Play is blocked in China, the app market for Android users remains divided. Mini programs are in a position to give WeChat's 980 million users a universal method to retrieve apps. And WeChat has shown that it's not afraid of blocking apps from its ecosystem. The mini program scheme got off to a rocky start in early 2016, but now it has found its footing. It is becoming a popular platform for location-based servicing software. Museums, restaurants and retailers are the dominant developers of mini programs, providing directories, menus and catalogues for users natively within WeChat. Messaging apps such as WeChat and Messenger have emerged as the dominant all-in-one applications on mobile. Messaging apps have become more popular than social networks in terms of monthly usage. Will we see a future where our smartphones are powered entirely by messaging apps?